you are going to be surprised today. Kim Casebeer has something really special for you. Kim, welcome. What are you going to do today? Thanks, Eric. Um, I am going to paint a vignette, which is kind of like a portrait in landscape. So um, something that I've just been experimenting a little bit with. I thought, give a try. Uh -huh. I have no idea what that means in this particular case. Can you give me a little bit more? Help me understand um, this? Yeah, yeah. So I think there are certain landscapes that really lend themselves to this. If all of the um, the important contrasts and focal points of the, the painting are in one area, you can focus on that area and focus on the detail of that area and then just kind of let the rest of it fade away. So this is just something that I've been experimenting with a little bit and I thought, why not? It's Friday. Let's let's have some fun. Oh, yay. Friday. Yay. And Christmas <laughs> time. Yay. We're going to get some time off. Uh, get to get, get to be home. Right. Wait a right. minute. We're already home. Right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> exactly. Okay. Well, let me show everybody just a little bit of your, your work here, just so right. that they know. First off, uh, just absolutely stunning, incredible work. And of course, we have a video with you, which we, we launched, I guess, in uh, earlier in the year or last year. When was it? I don't remember when it was. Uh, it was early, early in the year. Yeah, early, like in, early in 2020, before things got yeah. tough. And this is called Dramatic Light, and it's from this painting. It's fabulous. But some of your work is is in here, and I'm just pulling some things that we pulled off of your website. You, you didn't give us approval on these first, but That's just okay. absolutely Beautiful work. Our assumption is if it's on your website, you're willing to show it. Oh, yeah. And uh, you, you have this amazing ability to carve light into paintings and to really create the essence of light and mood. So we're excited about having you here today. And uh, I'll tell you what, you go get your, your stuff set up and okay. I will pop off and bring you back in just a second. Okay. Sounds right. fantastic. Dean and Streamline Art. And today is day number 268, 268 days of this from the beginning of coronavirus lockdown. We wanted to be here for you and give you something to occupy your brain, think about, get you excited about art. And every day I'm learning about new people joining, which is really, really fun. We're becoming this big giant family of people who love art and people who make art. And uh, we'd like to get you involved with us uh, in the comments. There's a group called Dreamliners, where our company is Streamline. So it's Dreamliners, and you can join that for free. Uh, and it's just kind of a way to stay in touch with people and to, to communicate and collaborate. And it's really kind of fun. Uh, but uh, so what's going on here today? Well, first off, uh, as I mentioned, I'm from Plein Air Magazine and Fine Art Connoisseur Plein Air is the number one selling art magazine in the uh, in the United States at Barnes & Noble, the biggest distributor. And we're really happy about that. We're now also in Michael's. We'd love to become the number one selling art magazine there. Uh, hint, hint. And uh, makes great Christmas presents. By the way, I think we're the only art magazine in Michael's, if, I, if I'm, uh, my homework is correct. Uh, we have uh, a place for you to go to see all the stuff. If you're looking for ideas, Christmas presents, you name it. We've got so much stuff. We're like Disneyland for artists. And so streamlinepublishing.com slash everything. i uh, got a great book to help you with your planning. And if you're uh, somebody who wants to learn art and you want to uh, take that art to the next level and start selling it, this is the book for you. Make more money selling your art. You can find it on our website, artmarketing.com, which by the way, has a lot of free tips on art marketing. And, uh, of course, you can get the book there and uh, you can get the videos there. But uh, art marketing uh, is a great thing to study if you want to learn. If you want to get ahead of 21, start thinking about it right now. Uh, we have on Sunday, which will be coming up this weekend, hopefully, <laughs> uh, coffeewitheric.com is where you go for Sunday Coffee, which is a blog I do. And it's kind of kind of reveals the inner self here. Uh, we're going to Russia. Yesterday, I showed a lot of the stuff on Russia. It sold two more seats. I think we're down to eight eight or nine seats uh, for our trip. Uh, we're taking uh, 46, 48 people. It's all we can do because of the small towns we're going to, and there's no accommodation. So if you're going to do it, get it done. Be a great Christmas present. Of course, uh, if you are new to us, if you're tuning in for the first time, we have a free video for you. It's called 97 Amazing Painting Secrets from the World's Best Artists. We started putting together things that uh, from some of our videos 
And this is a very popular. We've, we've given this to literally thousands and thousands of people, and they love it. And, of course, it gives you a, a sense of some of the things that we produce. And uh, we actually are coming out with a brand new one coming up soon, which is going to be all new, all different. If you are watching this every day at noon, or if you're new, you've, uh, you stumbled into it, we're noon. You can find us on Facebook or YouTube primarily. Uh, and then we replay on some of the others, uh, Twitter and Instagram and so on. But just search Streamline Art. If you want to get the 268 episodes, any of them are available if you subscribe on YouTube. And just search Streamline Art Video. And remember that we do it times two because we do it every day at 12 noon, but we also do it every day at three. Hey, all right. So we're going to get right to our guest uh, today. We have Kim K. Spear. And in case you just tuned in, she is a rock star painter. Uh, she's uh, absolutely terrific at, at light. And, and if you want to learn about light, she's got this video, Dramatic Light with Kim Casebeer. She was here. And Kim, unfortunately, the, the week you were here was a week I was traveling. Remember that? Yes. Yep, I do. And, and you left me a fabulous little gift, which I am staring at now. It's all the way across the room in, in the bookcase. But... Yeah. Uh, you did, she did this fabulous painting of the Adirondack chairs out, out in the yard and they, they're red and they glow. And when the light comes, they're plastic. And so when the light comes from, they really glow. And I, and I stare at those paintings and I figure, how could I possibly get the luminosity? But you nailed it. You just nailed it. Thank you for that gift. Well, thank you. Yeah. I'm glad you enjoy it. All right, so I'm going to let you just kind of do do your thing now, and I'll I'll read some questions and comments, and uh, take okay. it away, Kim. Okay, sounds good. Can you see this pretty well? It looks okay on my screen. So yeah, it looks great as long as you don't block it. Okay, well I'm going to try not to. Okay, um, so I thought I would try something a little different today. It's Friday, okay. you know. Try something fun. Um, this is a vignette, and um, I feel like there are certain landscapes that really lend themselves to this type of uh, composition. Uh, a landscape such as this that I've already started on the, the, the board, most everything of interest is concentrated in, in this one part of the painting. And, um, and so I can really focus on more detail in building up the painting in this part and then just kind of let it fade out in the rest of it. Okay, I want to ask you a couple of questions before you get rolling here, because yeah, these, yeah. these questions are either coming in or they're they're about to come in. Sure. What are you painting on? Uh, is this dry? Um, okay. Give okay. it. What are you using oils? So yeah. give us a feel for what you've done here so far. Sure. Um, okay. Yes, I'm I'm working in oil. And this is an oil primed linen mounted to a gator board. I mount those myself. Um, I How did, do you do it? Do you use Miracle Muck? What do you do? Uh, uh, yeah, I use Miracle Muck. Um, and then just roll it out. I just use a rolling pin to roll it out. And um, yeah, and, and then lay some books on top of it. And it lays nice and flat. And then I'm ready to paint about 24 hours later. Um, yeah, you save a lot of money that way, don't you? Yeah, yeah, you sure do. Yeah. So um, yes, this is mostly dry. I, I put a I put a tone on first, and that's what you're seeing. Most of what you're seeing, this warm. Uh, this is just a wash, really thin oil wash using mineral spirits and um, some warmer colors. Warmer colors like alizarin. There's some pinks out here in the sky, so alizarin. Um, I use some transparent earth red, some asphaltum, which is like a brown black. Uh, one of Gamblin's brown blacks, um, some transparent orange, and just kept it really warm and thin. And then I thought just to kind of get us started because we have limited amount of time, I, I laid on in a, with a, another very, you know, not a wash really, but just thin paint, um, just got some of the darker values in, in advance so that that was, and that's mostly dry. Like I can touch this and kind of rub it off. It's just, it's tacky. So, um, yeah, that's how I'm getting started. And now I'm going to, where do you get miracle muck just on Amazon or something? I went straight to Raphael's website. I think that's what it is. All right. Um, yep. Yeah. And you do have to order that 
uh, probably really soon if you're, or you might be too late in a cold climate because it, it can't be frozen. So they won't ship it uh, in winter time. Really? So, yeah, it, it changes the, the chemical, the balance of it, I guess, changes. So they, they can't ship it. So if you're in a warm climate, you're in good shape. And if you're in a cold climate, you got to wait till, um, till they have enough warm days to get it shipped to you. That's why I, I usually buy it, a large quantity of it uh, to get, so that I never run out in the winter time. Um, I, you know, I used to make my own panels. I would go to the Home Depot and have, buy a couple of sheets of birch board, you know, four by eights and have them cut them all for me and then glue them all. And I just got so tired of going through all that. So I finally just started buying them. Yeah. I buy my smaller ones because I go through so many of those, but anything that's an odd size or if it's a larger uh, canvas, yeah. I'll make those myself. All right. Hello from Israel. Hello from Scotland. Nice. Um, yeah, so I am really focusing on working on the darks right now and getting those in, um, uh, in this, in this area, because this is the, the focal point. Um, I don't know if a vignette works uh, really well for all, all designs, but for this type of design, I thought that it would really, really work well. Um, right now I'm using some natural bristle brushes. I love these brushes. These are my my fun brushes because they they take a lot of abuse you can really just scrub with these brushes yeah exactly what i'm doing right now i'm just scrubbing in keeping this paint still kind of thin and are you trying to let some of that background stay in there yeah yeah with the darks i think it's nice to keep them thin and let a little bit of the underpainting show richard schmidt says always keep your darks thin transparent um, Norway yeah. is watching. Hey, Norway. Welcome. Yeah. Ontario. Alaska. So you'll hear a lot of scrubbing sounds. I love the sound of scrubbing. <laughs> I do too. I think it's fun. I think this comes from my pastel days because I like to scrub it in and then that's why I wear gloves. I just kind of, I rub it in sometimes. Well, what I love is that you can get that sense of that warmth underneath and just a little bit of it coming through. It's really nice. Yeah, that's fun. So I just want to make sure. I think that shape looks pretty good. I just want to make sure the shape looks nice. And then um, I need to include a little bit of this back hill. I do have some. I don't think you can see them all on the screen because I want to focus on the painting, but I do have some reference photos over to the side that I'm, I'm looking to see a little bit of them. Yeah. You can see them a, a little bit probably. Yeah. yeah. So when I get to, I, I kept some paper towels over here by my easel. And when I get to the edges, I'm going to kind of feather them out a little bit, just get that a little bit lighter, thinner. Okay. And, and why? Uh, because this will work with my vignette idea. Okay. Yeah. I thought it might be about not taking the eye out, out of the painting. Well, that's, that, that is also the case. Right. Okay. Right. It just so happens that my, my, uh, composition is in this, in this area. And so I'm trying to, to, uh, keep your eye in to that area, the focal point, And then that's, also that's important to understand. Thank you. That helps. Yeah. Another one from Israel. Welcome. British Columbia. Nice. Thank you. All right. Lay in some of the, the land, the grasses and such. But again, I'm, I'm just, I'm work. I'm not trying to get too much paint on this too quickly. I really want to, I guess, come at it slowly. Okay. Yeah. Hey, Kim, um, I don't want to distract you here, but I always have trouble making roads look good because uh, there's, there's something I'm doing wrong in perspective oh. and you have nailed it there. Is there a, a particular trick to that or a particular way that you think about it so that it gets, you get, you get the perspective, right? Um, 
Well, so, so as, as the, um, in this case, the road or a creek or whatever it is, as it's coming back, it needs to flatten out. That's what's going to keep it. Your angles in general are um, more dramatic in the front part of your painting in the foreground, and then they flatten out as you go back. So okay. you have to make sure that you keep it pretty flat. If I brought this back up, say I had a little hill or something, I would have to flatten this first just like I did, and then I could bring it back up over the hill and widen it a bit, and then I'd still have to flatten it back up again. Wow. You funny. would think with my name, I'd know how to paint that subject. <laughs> That's true, Eric. <laughs> Hello, New Zealand. Hazel. We love Hazel. We took a group of painters to New Zealand. Yeah. I'm going to put, get another brush here so that I can start working on the sky. You know, where's your easel brush clip, Kim? I know. I need one of those. I actually have one of those, Eric. I know you do. Where is it? <laughs> <laughs> That's the question. It's a good thing you're not looking at the other side of my studio. Let's just say that. Now you're putting a lighter, a lighter yeah. shade in with a little white in it. Yeah, a yeah, a little bit lighter, um, like a blue violet grayed down has some uh, cad red light in it, so it, and yellow, so it stays gray, and um, just a little lighter and a little thicker, just a little bit thicker. I'm kind of laying on some brush, t um, putting some. Uh, getting some brush marks in and then leaving them alone. Just kind of start to build this a little bit. And you know, I don't know if I'll get this completely done in this short period of time, but we'll get, we'll get a fair amount done. I'm gonna add some, uh, some warmer colors now, some red violets. That might have gotten just a little bit light. I need to blend. I have all my colors pre-mixed on my palette. Um, but even when you do that, sometimes you have to make some adjustments. That's better. Okay, so somebody is actually, let's see, I, there's, I don't have a way to translate some of these comments, but somebody's writing in another language. Oh. So I, it says, Poi inquarte the palette. That sounds like Grazie, me. Grazie, Bacche oh. di Italia. Thank you from Italy, I'm guessing. Uh, I'm guessing you know the colors on the palette. Does that, oh. you think yeah. that's what that is? That's I don't know. In quadre, I don't know. Somebody will know. Uh, we usually have somebody else watching from Italy, so maybe they'll be able to tell us what this means. Okay. Uh, is your palette someplace where you could lift it up and show it on camera? Oh, well, it's on a tabaret. I'd have to pull the camera off the tripod. Okay. No, that's all right. No. But, you know, maybe at the end. Could I do that at the end? And maybe I could do that. Oh, it says you can frame the palette. Thank you, kisses from Italy. All right. Thank you, Stephen, for that translation. I like kisses from Italy. I'll take kisses from anywhere. <laughs> Just saying. There, that warmed up the, uh, the cloud just a little bit. And um, I'll start working on some of that sky that's surrounding the cloud, the negative space. I think that's pretty important. You really have to pay attention to... Um, well, in all painting, not just clouds, but really pay attention to the positive and negative shapes and make sure that they're equally interesting. They're dividing the space nicely. So are those clouds back there? I thought it was a mountain. This is a this is a hill right oh, here. Oh, I thought I mean I thought the big part was a hill. All right. So that that's clouds. These are clouds. All right. Takes me a while, Kim. You know, I'm I'm a little dense. <laughs> well, and it'll all make, it'll, it'll be softer, make more sense a little bit. Just Linda Marie says she's in the midst of cooking. She's in Italy. I wonder what she's cooking. Uh, Sounds... Got to be something good. If it's in Italy, it's good. Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah. see now I'm working the edges with this uh, light red. This this red has a mm, some alizarin, some cad red light in it. And if I get kind of work this around the edges of this cloud, well, they won't have such. Then the edges won't be so hard, and it'll it'll probably look more like a cloud to you, Eric. We want soft edges on our clouds, don't we? Yes, we do. Yeah, for sure. So, but I'm not pushing really hard. I'm not pushing down hard on the on the canvas. I'm really keeping that light. You do great clouds, by the way. Thank you. Thanks. That's what I work on on the uh, dramatic light DVD. I paint a nice cloud scene. You go into a lot of depth there. Yes. Yeah, I think that's getting pretty close. You can add just a little more warmth. Start getting some warmer reds and oranges in here. So you you do plein air painting, yes? Yes, I do. So how do you deal with a sunset or a sunrise because the light is there for about a split uh, second? Um, yeah, tough. It's tough. Um, on a sunset, it's actually to me is a little easier because you can get there in advance. You can you're kind of setting yourself up for yeah, the. You don't have to get up at four o'clock in the morning. And you don't have to get up at four o'clock in the morning. That's that's also true. Um, yeah. So you set it all up. You get the shapes in. Not the not necessarily just all the not ne necessarily the cloud shapes, but you'll get your land shapes in. You'll kind of block everything in. Mix color. You have to kind of anticipate what's going to happen almost. Whoops, I'm sorry. I just I just hit that. Um, and then once you start seeing the exciting stuff happen, then you have to work really fast. Yeah. Yeah, well, that's how I do it is I, I try to get most of the painting done, and then I lay the light in. I leave the light kind of blank. Uh, then I, I lay it in, and then I try to lay in how it's, you know, how it's lighting up the foreground or whatever. But, you know, I, f I find it very difficult because, you know, it's, it's hard. If you paint it as intense as you see it, it usually looks garish. Right. Well, that's why the grays are so important. I, I don't know. Um, hopefully this comes across as some, I mean, there's not, these are pretty bright, more uh, you know, blue violets and red violets, but I got some gray in here and then bringing, bringing the oranges into the edges of this cloud will further gray down the color. So, so if you gray down the colors, it's going to be less garish is what you're saying. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. that you're graying them down with a compliment opposite yeah. color. Yeah. Grain down those edges with a complementary color. Okay. What kind of paint are you using? Uh, what brand? Yeah. This is a uh, gambling gambling. I've been work using gambling paints for years. I really think that as a painter, once you find something you like, you should you should stick with it for the most part. I mean, it's always fun to experiment a little bit here and there, but you get to know the qualities of the paint. And everybody's uh, cad yellows or cad reds are a little different. Things are a little different when you go from brand to brand. So, Diane Hutton says, I'm baking apple butter snickerdoodle, snickerdoodle cookies for the local Marine base this morning. All right, Diane, you are a true American hero. Yeah, that sounds yummy. Yummy, yes. All this food is making me hungry. You know, people have been sending me uh, baked goods, and uh, I think I probably put on about five pounds. <laughs> yeah, it's that time of year. I'm... um adding some more yellow oranges now in the sky. I want to get these in before I get the, the really light part of the sky in. Basically working dark to light. Is that a typical for you, dark to light? Yeah. Yeah, it's, I guess it's a pretty traditional way of working. Wouldn't you say? It's, yeah. Um, someone is asking is gam gamblin it's G A M L I N gamblin paint the preferred paste paint. We don't have a preferred paste paint. We don't, we can't play that game because we would lose all of our friends. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but, uh, we have a, a vendor hall with a 
all, all the paint companies are pretty much there and the brush companies and the panel companies and the easel companies. So you get to kind of pick and choose. A lot of them give away samples. They all give away discounts. And so, yeah, I, I can't, uh, I can't endorse anything. As a matter of fact, somebody took a picture of me painting and one of the easel companies put it up and another easel company called me and said, why are you endorsing that easel? And I said, I'm not that just, somebody took a picture. So I gotta be careful. That gets tricky. I don't like losing friends. I have so few. <laughs> Um, I'm going to add just a little more alizarin and a little more red into this light. Hello, Hello Russia. Red violet there. That's better. I've got a big brush out for this. And I'm not going to get too much in the top of this sky going because... Well, that's the that's the point of the vignette. So I can really just keep this thin. Yeah, because you're trying to draw attention to that focal area. Yeah. Yeah. Oops, that wasn't supposed to happen. Oops. Look at that. Wow. Well, it's a spaceship. <laughs> it, it just is it's flying through the sky. <laughs> uh, it's just paint, Eric. We'll just get it off of there. <laughs> paint is very forgiving. It is. It really is, actually. And that's what people have to remember. If you're a new oil painter, you got to remember it's just paint. You can scrape it off. You can start again. You can you can let it dry. Work you can on wipe it. Wipe it on your clothes. You can wipe it on everything you have. You can throw it at your you can throw it at your uh, painting like I just did. I just bought this stuff at Home Depot that says it can get get ink or oil paint out of anything. Out of oh. your clothes, and so I'm gonna I'm gonna try it because I have oil paint on everything. Yeah, well, that's yeah. I'd like to say I have certain clothes for painting in the studio because I do get a little crazy. You just saw that that happens. That's actually a pretty common thing for me. I'm throwing paint around all the time, and um, I don't know. I think most of my clothes are studio clothes at this point. That's why I like the world famous plein air apron. That's fabulous. That that works. Notice I'm, um, I, I have a very light color in the sky right now, and I'm trying to blend this uh, orange to, to that light color. So I'm trying to find a transition color that will work to make that happen. I need to get it just a little bit darker. Maybe a little warmer too, add a little orange to that. I think it's important when you're working on a transition color, the, the goal is to find an in-between value and also kind of work the in-between color. It's almost like you're taking the two colors and just, you can blend them on your canvas or on, I'm sorry, on your palette, which I find more interesting than actually blending on the canvas. Like I blend it on the palette and then I just use that color instead of softening things too much on the, on the canvas. Hello from Russia says you're doing great. I think the result will be as always a bomb. I guess that's a good thing. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Somebody from Russia talks about a bomb. You want to go, wait a minute. <laughs> no, just kidding. Yeah. Just slowly getting those. See there, that's starting to work. Slowly yeah. getting those warms blended with the lights of the sky. And, and then what I like about it is you just don't give up. You just keep dipping in and getting it, you know, experimenting until you get it where you want it to be. Yeah, just get after it. Plus, it's just fun to play with the paint. Let's be honest. Yeah, what we do is uh, kind of fun. It's like we get to play. Yeah. That maybe got a little bit too fussy. If I see something like that happening, like it's just, it's a little, mm, 
it actually could be a little softer there, not as many brush strokes. So I'll just soften that up a bit with a paper towel. It's always good to have lots of paper towels handy. Paper towel business would be out of business if it weren't for all of us think it might be painters. Yeah, there's definitely some truth in that. And it's very important, folks, folks, that we support our art vendors right now. We're all using a lot of paint and brushes and everything anyway, but we need to support them because we got to keep them in business because it's been a tough year for everybody. Yeah. So if you have if you have the ability, of course, also support your local local businesses, especially because we need them. We don't want to have to get everything from big giant stores and restaurants. We want something local. So yeah. Support them. Hi, hi, you know, use them for takeout. Do something if you can. And support those galleries too. Oh, absolutely. And artists. Absolutely. You show at those galleries. Yeah. Yeah. I'm really starting to enjoy what's happening. I'm going to blend this just a little bit more, just soften that up a bit. Um, maybe soften this edge up just a little bit more. Mm. But what I'm enjoying is this area right here. It's really starting to pop a little bit. So I'm probably going to get a little more transparent orange with some white and really emphasize that even a little more. There we go. You're doing great. Lots of positive comments. Um, People from all over the world are watching you. No pressure. No pressure. <laughs> You're up for it. You, you, nothing shakes you. You're like, you may be shaking on the inside, but you are cool on the outside. You know, yeah, I'm actually just having fun here, Eric. I got to be honest. I'm truly having fun. Yeah. It's, uh, You're good at this. You're a good teacher. You have a lot of confidence. Well, I do get in front of a lot of people on vid in, on vid in video chats these days, Zoom and other things. Seems like that's, that's what we've all been doing a lot. kind of becoming second nature i'm adding just a little more yellow down there pop that hello it whales i think this first we've seen whales do you know prince charles <laughs> prince charles is a subscriber to plein air magazine for real yeah because he's a watercolor painter i don't know if he's going to watercolor live i haven't told ah. him about it okay well that's cool i just learned something i invited tony bennett to watercolor live. I don't know if he'll come or not, but he's a watercolorist. I'm going to head back down here to the land and work a little bit more on this. Cool. Getting some warm colors in because I have just that green. So, and again, building up really more in this area. The goal for this was just to leave it. I think I can just kind of leave that as is. It really doesn't need much more. I may need to work the edges of this. bit more get get this a little more atmospheric in the back back hill hello from egypt mustafa we love you man thank you for tuning in so i didn't really talk about the underpainting but the underpainting is pretty important especially in a situation like this because you're basically blending your color into the underpainting so the underpainting has to have the same or close to the same value that you are going to end up with so that's why i had the underpainting as different values i had the darks here alongside the road and the darks in the trees and then this kind of mid-tone underpainting in the in the uh grasses. So you notice that the paint I'm applying isn't that much different in value from the underpainting. Yeah. Well, and it's, and you're able to pull some of that out, which is nice. Yeah. It just kind of naturally blends. If, if I started with white or started with a really light tone there, it wouldn't, it would, it would, it would, it would be too uh, dramatic, too, too much of a change. So, and it would be distracting. Somebody said Howard Stern is now a watercolorist. I just saw, huh. I, I know Howard and I don't know him well, but I've, I've met him, I've interviewed him 
And um, anyway, he uh, I saw a picture of one of his watercolor paintings the other day. He was in the newspaper in the Hamptons. And I was blown away. He's really a good painter. I sent him a bunch of our videos, so maybe that taught him how to paint. I'm guessing he probably figured it out on his own. <laughs> <laughs> or, you know, you can take the credit for that. I don't take credit for anything. <laughs> All right. Let's get a little bit of the road in. So I do try to make sure that I paint... My brush work works with the, um, the shape that I'm trying to achieve. So yeah. this road, you were talking about how do you flatten a road? Well, part, part of what you, the other part of what you do is you paint in a horizontal, with horizontal brush work like this, and that will just naturally help flatten that road. And if you're going downhill, you paint the direction you're going downhill on, right? Yeah, and paint more, yeah, get those angles in. Sort of, it sort of reiterates what you've already drawn. I also like how this road now in the, in the, I don't know if you, I don't think you guys can see it all the way over there, but in the photo, this road, there's more ground right here in the, in the photo. And instead of including a lot of that, I'm just kind of letting that edge be, um, be softer, not as, uh, not as obvious and don't have strong contrast right there. So. So this road is in shade? Well, this is very late in the evening. So there's, there's just a not a strong direct light anywhere. That's the name of a song, you know, late in the evening. Paul Simon. Oh. Watching from Latvia. That's first we've seen Latvia, I think. Thank you. She says, I love how the oranges blended with the light of the sky. Impressive work so quickly done without much fuss. Thank you, Latvia. Latvia. That's Svetlana. Nice. All right. Hey, you folks that are watching around the world, hit the share button so your friends can find this. Because yeah. artists tend to hang with artists. We're trying to we're trying to get a million people watching this. We we're we're all very very long way to go to get there. <laughs> yeah, but I I'm always impressed by the amount of people that really tune in well average uh average views on a show like this is ten thousand three hundred a day wow but you know my goal is to teach a million people to paint uh because i think painting changes people's hearts and makes them happier because they're living the living the dream when they're painting you know you can't be a painter and be unhappy i don't think so Right. I figure that's a great way to change the world is to get more people painting. Yeah. And in right now, during this pandemic, I don't know about other people, but boy, art, my, my painting is what gets me through some days, you know, just yeah. the joy of being in front of the easel or outside plein air painting on a nice warm day. Well, my saying is a day without painting is like a day without oxygen. There you go. Yeah. That's just lovely, Kim. You notice I'm adding a few more warm colors right here in the in the um, in the road, just to help emphasize the edge of the road and break it up a little bit. You don't want any strong, hard lines, really. So I don't want to get too close to this edge again. So I want this to stay pretty soft right here, and then at some point here, I can closer to the closer to this center interest. I am trying to be purposeful about not making the center happen right in the middle, but kind of right to, just to the right of the middle. Yeah. Uh, almost the thirds. When back. we were kids, we were taught that perfect composition was to put everything in the middle. And it takes a while to get away from that, but oh, it typically does. it doesn't work. Sometimes some people pull it off. Sometimes. Well, I think it's fun when you can get as close as to the middle as possible. So the the golden mean really because if you're here and if you're at, if you're at a third the golden mean is actually like closer well about right there it's about two right. thirds yeah now it's closer to that area yeah so that 
Yeah. I might get a few more darks. Hello, Budapest. Here. What most people don't know is that that's two cities, Buda and Pest. I didn't know that. A river in between. Barbara says, yes, but you can be unhappy about the painting you're creating. Frustration is a reality to deal with. Yes, I would agree with that, but I embrace it because I'm growing. Hey, we have somebody from Greece. Welcome, Greece. Thesca Thessaloniki. Sounds so, like a dish. So back to what Barbara is talking about. I think what she's saying is um, it's okay to, yeah, you're learning and growing from what you, from your mistakes. And that's okay. That's what, that's what you have to do. Absolutely. Yeah. Hello, India. Selva Kumar in India. She says, beautiful color. Or he says, I'm not sure which. I got a lot of people tuning in. I think, you know, people are starting to be home more again. Mm -hmm. Yes. I agree. Need to. I like this underpainting showing, but a little too much right there. So. Okay. Blend that just a little bit more. Hello, Marla. Marla Brenner is watching. She was on the other day. No, that's, I'm sorry. It was a different Marla. <laughs> Marla from Madison, Wisconsin. Okay, let's see here. The second biggest city in Greece. I didn't know that. That's terrific. I've been to Greece. I love Greece. Probably need a few more darks. Well, we're coming up to about, you got about five minutes left, Kim. No oh. pressure. Okay. Well, I'm, yeah, I'll just see what I need to do. What's the most important yeah. out here? What, what lesson do you want us to learn that you haven't taught us yet? Um, well, let's see. We've talked about really working on just the, the focus and depth. Well, you know what? We didn't really talk about um, um, the depth of the painting. And okay. That it's really important because you can't get the drama without um, without the depth of the painting. And that's probably something that I could work on a little bit here. This contrast, there's not a high contrast here, so this doesn't, there's not a big jump, but there's a big jump right here from the trees to the sky. Yeah. And really, I could tone the, uh, again, it's working about, it's edges. It's all about edges. So get those edges a little softer to, to get some more depth in the painting. That'll push oh. the trees back. Cool. And I'm using a, this is my red violet and some of my blue violet. I'm just pushing those trees back closer to the, closer to the sky contrasts and the, the sky values and the sky colors. So see that push that oh. back. Okay. Yeah. Oh, it really does. So Hello, Austria. Good evening. I love Austria. What a great world we have, huh? Yeah. There's some places here I'd really like to visit one day. Yeah. That we keep hearing about here. That are well, I, I keep asking people to tell me the places they want to do paint trips, and I'll put paint trips together. I'm, t I'm doing one to Russia, and then after that, i got to start picking. I'm thinking I'd like to do – I've never done a paint trip to Switzerland, and I thought it'd be the, the Swiss Alps and the you know also Lake Como in Italy kind of area, Lake Lucerne. Nice. Yeah. Uh, Beautiful, beautiful places. Now um, that my kids are in college, I'm free, baby. You can do that. I was just going to say, is there going to be some babysitting involved with that? That's what I have to think about. <laughs> Hello, Scotland. Scotland, Lucy says, after capturing some good reference photos recently of colored skies, this demo has encouraged me to go, ha to have a go painting. Great good. tip. Yay. All right, Lucy, you can do it. You can do it. Everybody give Lucy encouragement. Yeah, you can do it, Lucy. We will come. I have come. Uh, Greg says, come to Bonnie, Scotland. I will. I have. I, I rented a castle in Scotland with six other painters. We had a great time. Eva from Denmark. Welcome. Linda Marie is like, come to Italy. I'll cook. Hey, Linda, I'm bringing all my friends, all uh -huh. thousands of us. Ireland is on. Hello, Ireland. Gosh, yeah, there's some beautiful places that you're talking about there. Yeah. 
got a, we got a, got a lot of travel we got to do. We may have to do, I think we should just do Eric's around the world trip. We'll just take <laughs> a year and we'll all go. Yeah. Notice I'm getting just a little more, uh, some lighter yellows, more intense yellows, just right here on the, right next to that edge. Yeah. I was curious, you know, on your reference photo, you've got, you've got, definitely you can see where the sun is. I was curious if you were going to try to drop that in or if that was part of your plan. Oh. Yeah, the strong, no, not the really strong lights that are happening in the middle of the cloud there. I don't actually don't think that's a great shape. I'm, I'm pretty much, I'm kind of using the shapes that I see in my reference photo, but I've, I've made up my own basically to, that work better. Let's so, see here. Kim, it says, Kim is a Kansas, KS girl here. I guess that's Kansas. I have one of your pieces. It's the first piece that made me love landscapes. Your work is beautiful. Oh, Kim. And then she says, thanks for these shows, Mr. Rhodes. Uh, Stephanie, I want to tell you, Mr. Rhodes is my grandfather. Call me Eric. <laughs> K K Kota, K Kyoto. All right. Croatia. Oh, Peoria. That's kind of like a foreign country. Ah, just kidding. What surface are you painting on again? Somebody didn't get it in, in the beginning. So it's a board with linen panel mounted on it. Is that a great gator yeah. board? Yes, it's a gator board with oil primed linen. It's Clausen's oil primed linen. And it's, um, oh boy, I think it's, I can't remember the number now. Yeah, but it's, like, it's like a medium weave, you know, a landscape yeah. pipe. The kind of linen you would expect a landscape painter to work on couple of RV p suggestions, RV people in there. I've got an RV. Maybe we'll, we'll do an RV painter's caravan somewhere. That'd be fun. Mm -hmm. I better stop talking about this stuff. Otherwise I'll have to do it. Yeah. You have a lot of planning ahead of you right now, Eric. Well, that's what I do. I am a, a planner. I'm getting this just a little warmer. I guess in a way I, I didn't pull that whole light through, but I am putting a, a few of those little lights in. So just not as, I guess, not as linear as what I see in the actual reference photo. So talk just briefly about, yeah, I noticed you're putting really thick paint on there. Talk yes. about Talk about how to do that. Well, talk about why you're doing that. Oh, well, now I'm working on the lighter values. And so I want to make sure that those are nice and thick. Um, really got to, they're almost like staccato notes in music, right? You just got to, you have to lay Get, like really get a whole bunch of paint at the tip of, I'm working on it right now on my palette, get a whole bunch of paint at the tip of my brush. I don't know if you can see that. It's yeah. like right there on the tip. And then the trick is, is after you have a lot of paint on your brush, don't push. You just barely touch the canvas. Almost like your brush doesn't probably even touch the canvas. It's just the paint that's touching the canvas. And that really accentuates that. Kim? I hate to do this to you, but I'm going to have to shut you down. Okay. We are, we're we running up to our time limit and some of these people will get cut off on some of the platforms. So I don't want to. Okay. You are awesome. Come back on camera so everybody can see you real quickly. Okay. Let me get it away. All right. Thumbs up and applause for Kim Casebeer. <laughs> Congratulations, Kim. Thanks for you watching. You really inspired a lot of people today. You had one yeah. of the biggest worldwide audiences we've had. You are awesome. Okay, don't yeah, don't tell me how many. <laughs> well, it, we won't know till the end of the day anyway because a lot of people watch at night on the replays. But I want to tell everybody that Kim has this fabulous fabulous video where she does this painting and uh, it's called Dramatic Light with Kim Casebeer. You can find that at Lily Doll uh, lilyartvideo.com. And uh, so, Kim, you've been fabulous today. Thank you for all the tips and the inspiration. Thanks. I love watching you paint, and I love your paintings. You are a rock star. Thanks. Glad everybody could join us. It was fun. Uh, we have a website for Kim. Kim has uh, kimcasebeer.com. That's right. So why should they go there? What's there they're going to find? Oh, boy. They're going to find, um, well, they'll find, yeah, they'll find a, a little intro to the DVD there. Um, they'll find workshops that I have, mentoring that I'm doing, um, the galleries that I'm in, a lot of pretty art on the website. Terrific. 
Okay. Well, thank you so much, Kim. You, you're a rock star. <laughs>